Welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. My name is Adam Payne, Sheboygan County Administrator and co-host of this program. And we're very pleased today to have Chairman Mike Vandersteen back in the saddle. Welcome back, Mike. It's great to be back, Adam. Thank it's you. Good to have you back. My gosh, hosting this program by yourself is no small feat. So <laughs> good to have the boss back. And as you can see, for, perhaps from one of the camera angles here, Mike is instituting a much more relaxed atmosphere in county government. For now on, he's allowing all employees to put their f feet up on the desk and get a little bit more comfortable. And Mike, I appreciate that kind of a work environment. As you know, if you followed this program, Mike's had some surgery. And do you want to just share with our viewer, viewers quick the status? Well, I went through uh, five operations in 13 months now. And all the operations are done on my ankles, and they're healing up. So hopefully I'll be on my feet and walking quite well in the next uh, three to four months. And as I've kidded Mike from time to time, when he's actually at home recovering, I hear from him a lot more than when he's working full time. So I'm glad to have him up and about too. Uh, anyway, it's good to have you with us. And this month we're focusing on, again, one of our very important department heads, the Building Services Director and Building Services Director, Jim Tabist is with us. Jim, welcome. Thank you, it's good to be here. Jim, as we were talking about off the air a little bit, it's funny how time flies. He started with the county back in 2000, became director in 2003, and he's responsible for overseeing all the buildings throughout Sheboygan County and, and with 20 departments, a number of buildings, including the courthouse and administration building, and, and in fact, the very facility we're in, U, UW campus. Uh, Jim has a lot on his plate. Jim, please share by sharing a little bit with our viewers about your, a little background about yourself and what the key roles and responsibilities are of your department. I'm um, a mechanical engineer for 30 years. I'm married. I have three children. Recently added a daughter-in-law. <clears throat> We're lucky that they are living in the county. Um, we moved back. I grew up in this area. Went to school in Oostburg. I attended UW Sheboygan, got my associate degree here. Went on to UW Milwaukee. Um, we moved away for about 20 years and came back in 2000 because it's a great place to bring up our kids. They were just getting into high school and um, we just liked everything about Sheboygan County. Uh, principally, our department is service to the rest of the other departments. We, we take care of the buildings, we try to do things so that they don't have to be taken away from their role serving the public even if it's taking the shredding out to the dumpster or whatever. Um, our department kick chips in. We keep the security. We try to keep the building safe, efficient for everybody to use, and of course, open to the public. Now, building services, again, as you said, support department for all the other departments. How many staff do you have, and, and what general areas do they focus on? You have custodial, you have maintenance. We have um, 34 people. There's 15 cleaners that work second shift. There's 13 maintenance workers that work, some are on first and some are on second. We have an electrician, a supervisor, a part-time clerk, and myself. And like you said, we take care of the courthouse and the administration building, the two jails at the law enforcement center and the detention center for the adults. Um, we have the ADRC building out in Sheboygan Falls, our Health and Human Services building where the public health is located and other departments. Uh, and then, like you said, we assist all the other buildings, the highway shops, Rocky Knoll Nursing Home, the airport. Our electrician handles all the security at all those places. It gets to be quite a load. I think it's a half a million square feet something like 80 buildings with electric meters on. And total budget? Our operating budget is $3 million a year, and we've held that pretty steady for the last decade. It's yeah. been a challenge, but we want to keep government cheap, and uh, we're holding the tax levy down. Now, are there any areas that you're using uh, private sector folks to help with custodial responsibilities or maintenance responsibilities or electrical responsibilities. Um, how, do you, how do you proceed with some of the buildings throughout the county? Well, we always call in contractors when things break down. We, our guys can fix pumps, replace toilets, sinks, but if we're 
doing a remodeling that's going to pull them away from fixing that minor stuff, like a month-long remodeling or something, then we'll hire a contractor out to do that. We'll hire a contractor in to work with the Freon and the air conditioning stuff. Um, sometimes our electrician gets overwhelmed because there's so many places. He'll call in an electrician to help him out. Um, we do not privatize anything yet. We have looked into it numerous times. We re recently, in the 2012 budget, we were um, challenged to say, why aren't you outsourcing the cleaner? So many other places do it. Why don't you? We had tried it in the 1990s, and there were many problems. It just, at that time, the county board decided it wasn't worthwhile. But it's hard to put a price on that. How, how you handle problems, it's what we do, I guess. But um, there's also confidentiality. We've got lots of records of the public, their birth records, their juvenile record, their witness, something that can't get out into the public. We don't want their identity stolen because we've got their social security numbers and whatever else. So those areas were very sensitive, but again, you can't hardly put a price on that. How do we compare our cleaning staff to the private sector? Right. Luckily, or fortunately, Sheboygan County shares a purchasing agent with the city, and they recently had gotten bids for cleaning services, and we were able to compare their, the bid prices that, we, that the city got back, as well as what they are using at the police department. We called the some other um, municipal buildings, we, uh, post office, found out what, how much their cleaners are costing. And to make sure it was apples to apples, we divided the cleaning cost by the square footage of the building. And I'm proud to say the Sheboygan County cleaners are doing it cheaper than the private sector is doing it in any of those other locations. And as much as a third of the cost of one of the bidders and it might not, not necessarily mean, if you looked at cleaner to cleaner, that the county cleaner is receiving less pay, but that when they, you look at the total area that they're responsible for cleaning, the square footage, it broke out that actually we were pro, uh, providing that service, taking care of those responsibilities at a more cost-effective rate than had we outsourced it. Right. Yeah. The private companies got to pay for their supervision, and they have to pay they're going to make some profit and in their insurance and some other things that they have to cover. So you can't just look at the dollars per hour for the private cleaner versus the dollars per hour for the county cleaner. But overall, we are doing it cheaper. We'd actually have to raise the tax levy if we wanted to privatize. And I'd just like to take a, a note to compliment Jim and his staff. I've been here 13 years now, and every year the budget process seems to get more challenging. We have state caps in place now that we didn't have before and how much we can raise the levy. Chairman Vandersteen is one of the best track records you can have from a standpoint of Sheboygan County's reduced the property tax levy four out of the last four, five years. No other county has done that in the state. And that doesn't happen if you don't have every department being part of the solution. And building services under Jim's leadership has not only been frugal, but as you said earlier, really has just held the line for years. And then when we have looked at outsourcing, as some units of government have, uh, we are providing a more cost-effective service. So it's a tremendous credit to you, Jim, and your staff. And, and then when I look at the final results, when I come to work day in and day out, uh, the buildings are well kept, they're clean, we don't have trash sitting in the back corner because we're not getting to it because we're understaffed, the, the job gets done. And again, I really compliment building services and your leadership, well done. Thank you very much, and I too would like to compliment the building services staff. They are really conscientious. Um, they do something simple like plowing snow, but when you think about it, in order to get our parking lots open by 8 o'clock in the morning, they're getting up at 4 o'clock or something like that to plow themselves out. They're driving to work on roads that may not have been plowed yet by the highway department or the city, right. and then they're hitting it and getting everything cleaned up in three hours or a couple hours, depending on the snowfall. And the trust factor you mentioned earlier. I know the school district in the past and other units of government have gone to uh, privatizing their, their uh, mm -hmm. custodial responsibilities. And not to say the private sector can't do a good job, but we have heard stories of 
things disappear in offices or something happens and we have so much sensitive information throughout Sheboygan County, whether it's the administration building or health and human services, what have you, that um, you don't want that to be a problem. And I'm so glad it never has been. We yeah. really have a great track record in that regard. Going back to UW-Sheboygan, where we're uh, taping this program right now, and a lot of folks don't recognize that though UW-Sheboygan is run by the state, it is your department that has a role with UW-Sheboygan in making sure that the, the facility is kept up. Uh, any additions that happen, you provide an oversight role, and we provide some financial support to make sure that things are kept up and taken care of here. Please, how does that work? What, what yeah. is that relationship? It's a very close relationship. It's, it's mirrored by the 13 two-year campuses across Wisconsin. They are all county-owned property, county-owned buildings, and run by the state. We, like you said, we provide some funding for them to maintain the, the building themselves or replace carpet or doorknobs or toilet or a sink or something like that. And then the state provides the operating staff to Edu run the education programs as well as maintain the buildings and the furniture and they pay utilities. Um, I work very closely with the maintenance staff here. Almost every other day we're talking about something. Try how can we fix something cheaper? How can we support this education program? And I think it's an excellent example of how county and state and the private sector can work together. The, the private sector does donate to this institution. Right, right, very good. Well, thank you. With that, I'll turn it over to Mike. Thank you much, Adam. Jim, you've been, your department's, uh, in addition to all the maintenance that you do on our buildings and property, you're also involved in energy conservation and all of our capital projects. A short time ago, you started an energy conservation committee. Could you tell us why you did that? Well, our utilities kept going up and up and up. Even in our administration building, we weren't adding any staff, but the the power use kept going up and up every year. It's not just the dollars, but the actual kilowatts. And it was getting to a point where our, just our utilities was a million dollars. We got a $3 million budget and a third of it is going to pay utilities. So Adam Payne challenged me in two, as we were preparing the 2009 budget to cut those expenses by 10%. Not only stop them from rising, but actually drop them by 10%. I thought our billing services department was just doing a great job. We were replacing lights with more efficient lights. We were coming up with better motors. We, they were keeping an eye on energy efficiency, but we just weren't making an impact. I had met with people from Focus on Energy and Wisconsin Public Service, and they suggested this energy team as a way to get all the staff to buy in to saving energy, just to get them to think about turning off the light when they leave the office, or turn off the computer, at lunch or when they go home at, at the end of the day. And uh, it's really worked out well. We've got a member from each building and we meet together every month. We come up with different ideas and they spread it back to the building that they're in. And we did meet that 10% goal that first year and we've continued to meet and we've continued to make improvements. And this past year, I'm glad to say we were able to cut utility use by 15%. That's really uh, exceeding the mark. Nice job. Um, you talked a little bit about a few of the projects that are the accomplishments of those projects, but um, other than just turning things off, uh, what projects has this committee uh, pu uh, pushed us into considering and, and what things are on the horizon for maybe other things to do? Right now we've been concentrating things that pay for themselves in that first year, so we're not getting additional tax levy dollars. We are, rather than wait for a light fixture to burn out, we're seeing that maybe we need to replace them ahead of time to get that energy savings. And we, this group has pushed us to do that. And we've taken advantage of uh, rebates from Focus on Energy. It also made us aware of some new technologies. The LED light fixtures are changing like every month, but they're more and more efficient. And a side benefit to our department is they'll last 10 years so we don't have to go and replace that light bulb every year like we have in the past. Um, 
we relit the bicycle tunnel and put motion sensors on it so it wasn't lit all night long. It's only lit when somebody's actually going through it. We've replaced motors more often than what we had been doing with high efficiency type rather than getting them repaired. On things on the horizon, uh, we're relamping all the highway department sheds. Right now they're with uh, light fixtures that take about 10 minutes to warm up. So when one truck leaves, they're not sure when the next guy's gonna come, they don't turn it off because it might be 10 minutes of wait for the lights to come on. So now we've gone to fluorescent, it's called a high bay fixture. They can turn them off every time they leave because they come right back on. Other things that we've looked at was some solar energy at the Veterans Memorial to pay for their, their lighting, but they've got such long payback periods, like 25 years. We're not sure that the solar panel will even last that long. So we're trying to be prudent with how we're using the tax dollars. In the future, there's probably some things that, like a three-year payback, that would be worthwhile to the taxpayer for us to put in some heat exchangers to grab some of the heat of the building before it gets exhausted out, things like that. Um, we're also trying to develop a long range plan. So if this boiler fails, we know right away what we're gonna replace it with. That's something that's more high efficiency and how much money we can get back from focus on energy. Sounds like you're doing a great job in that area, Jim. Um, to take a look at the capital improvements program, there's been a lot of uh, building projects uh, that we uh, have instituted in Sheboygan County in the past. Can you tell us a little bit about some of those projects and mostly your involvement in those? Well, the um, big construction projects are bonded projects. The last multi-million project that we did was here at the UW Sheboygan, the Acuity Technology Center, as can be seen from I-43. That was some time ago, but as you know, the economy's slow. And with your direction, we're keeping the tax levy down, so there are some buildings that were under consideration and they're being put on hold. So I have been working on smaller projects, um, replacing roofs before they start to leak, replacing air conditioners before some building ends up without air conditioning for the whole summer. Let's replace it before it fails. Uh, we're replacing some boilers again, before they fail, but also to get some energy efficiency improvements. Um, things that I'm working on right now is an air conditioning unit at Sheboygan Falls building, and we're putting all the controls on the computer. Um, part of the cost cutting measure that we did was we eliminated the maintenance worker that was out at that building in Sheboygan Falls. So to save time from somebody driving back and forth all the time, by putting it on the computer, we can see the temperature in each individual office from the courthouse. We can fix settings without having to drive out there. We uh, recently re upgraded the 29 fuel tanks that the county has. There were some state regulations to protect against spills. We did that. Uh, we replaced the security system at the jail where the guards can touch the screen and open doors or turn on lights or open an intercom message or, or a camera. And we replaced that in the entire building. Um, it's always something. I'm working on replacing boilers this summer at the highway department. This afternoon I'm meeting with somebody about the roofs for this coming summer trying to get things bid out early so we're the first ones and we can actually get lower prices than if we waited till May to bid things out. Could you tell us a little bit more about that bidding process? Uh, you know, how do we go out for bids and how do we select the, uh, the people that are going to be doing these projects for Sheboygan County? Um, anything over 25000 that that we estimate will cost 25000 is bid out. If it's a smaller project, I'll write a bid specification to make sure that all the contractors know exactly what we want. I don't really have a lot of time for that lately and we've, had, we've been hiring engineering firms or architects to create the bid specifications and draw the plans. And we advertise locally and in the plan rooms across Southeast Wisconsin. Bidders uh, submit a bid, they're open publicly at a property committee meeting or some other county meeting. And then we review the bids to make sure everybody's on this, 
bidding the right things. Um, they're not trying to cheat us on something. And then it's awarded to the lowest price bidder. Now, in some of the other projects, I was on the building committee for the Rocking Oil, and I know that you act as kind of almost a project manager and stay on top of all these projects. Uh, could you give us a little, give the people at home a little bit of an idea of what that entails? Yeah, I, I feel it's my job to keep projects like that under budget. You know, even though that one at Rocky Knoll was serving the people of Rocky Knoll, I assisted by keeping track of all the invoices that were paid. With any remodeling project, you open up a wall, there's always a surprise. I tried to deal with them quickly to, so that the crew isn't standing there waiting and getting paid. Uh, and then make the economical decision that will keep us under budget. So I'm tracking, I'm monitoring, I'm coming up on the site every other day or every day or whatever is needed to make sure that everything is what we want. It's within the specification that we required in the contract and we're not going to go over budget. Well, we appreciate you giving everything that uh, detailed attention, Jim. Now, uh, when you work with uh, the county board, uh, we've got nine standing committees. Um, you've got one committee that really you work with directly, but how do you interact with, uh, with all the other committees? Um, I, like you said, I do report to the property committee, and we do, they do meet twice a month. So I'm spending most of my time with them, but like when the Rocky Knoll project was going on, I attended every health care committee meeting provided an update of where we are in relation to half done with construction, 60% done, where we are with financing, what any changes might have come up, um, just to keep them apprised. Same thing with the guard station at the Sheriff's Department. I met with law committee. Anytime they have any questions about a specific project because it's really under their responsibility, I'm there to answer their questions. That's great. We really appreciate the time that you put in being there to, to answer all those questions and give them that detailed explanation of that project. With that, I'll turn it back over to Adam. Thanks, Mike. I, I think so far we've asked Jim probably a, a lot of questions that are pretty routine for him, relatively easy to answer, so I think it's time we up the ante a little okay. bit. Okay, that's all yours. Um, could you please explain to our viewers exactly why the Green Bay Packers lost to the... <laughs> no, no, we'll Defense. The, the recall that's going on. Who's going to be our next governor? And do you support this recall? No, no. You don't have to <laughs> Let's go with one like upcoming planned projects. What do you got on the horizon that is important to Sheboygan County? Any, any new buildings, anything that uh, is rather significant that you're planning for? There's long range plans to move the highway department shop out of the city of Sheboygan, more centrally located. That's been postponed over the years, but they have indicated that I'm going to be more involved in what they have in the past. In fact, I was just at the highway department yesterday talking with the highway commissioner about building situation. Um, the, the jail had had plans to add a third and fourth floor due to some efforts at Adams' um, suggestion. They've gotten the inmate population down right now, but eventually we see that that is going to happen. We're going to have to do those sorts of things. For now, um, dealing with architect here at the UW Sheboygan, we're updating the master plan to see how we can support. They're talking about some more four-year de bachelor degrees, what type of buildings might be remodeled or added on to serve those needs, and then all the roofs and the air conditioning, that um, ongoing project. And that's what I think, I hope viewers take from this discussion is you, know, you talk about building services and a lot of people, as I would have thought 13 years ago when I started this job, well, that's about cleaning the, the corridors and the bathrooms and making sure that the light bulbs are changed. But building services has so much more going on from A to Z, whether it's overseeing multi-million dollar projects as you personally have done or if it's responding quickly to emergencies and in, in the building that may be a water leak that's running from floor to floor, uh, all the improvements you've made, the cost efficiencies you've made, there's just a, a tremendous amount going on in building services. One of the things that we're all dealing with, Jim, and certainly you as a department head, is 
trying to hold the line. You've had an excellent track record in keeping your costs down and coming up with cost efficiencies. How do you see the future and, and the, what challenges do you see coming to your department as we continue to strive to hold that line yet need to continue to maintain our, our buildings and, and continue to put new roofs on and things that aren't getting any cheaper? Yeah, and the, and the buildings are getting older and they're needing more maintenance. It is definitely a challenge. In the past, we've cut staff by 10%. I think we're getting to be about bare bones. I'd like to say we're gonna leverage technology, but you still gotta have a guy to be able to take the pump apart and put it back together. It's, uh, we hope to work smarter. I hope that we get more training to our staff, that they can do things quicker and smarter, uh, improve communication with computer technology, of course, and try to cut down on travel as much as possible. Yet it will be a challenge because the buildings are getting older. Fortunately, Mike and the other county board supervisors have to decide <laughs> how they're gonna, what priorities are gonna be established and how we're gonna pay for them. But it is an ongoing challenge and it's not getting any yeah. easier. Well, we appreciate you being here today. You covered a lot of information. If you have additional questions about building services or you heard something from Mr. Tobese today that you'd like to learn a little bit more about, whether it's the bidding process and, and the thresholds there or the roles and responsibilities of staff, please don't hesitate to contact Jim. Uh, likely his assistant, Gail, will answer the phone. Is that the case? And no, I, yeah, or I answer it directly because she's only part-time. And to get that information, you can go to the county website. We have all the departments listed there, background information about those websites, phone numbers. And if you ever struggle to get a hold of anybody in Sheboygan County, whether it's Chairman Mike Vandersteen or myself, Jim Tabeast or anyone else, you can always contact our county clerk's office and Julie Glancy and her staff do an excellent job and they'll get you in the hands of the right person. So thank you for joining us today. Next month, we're gonna have Aaron Brault here, our planning director, planning and conservation director. Uh, some of you may recognize that name, Aaron Brault, because he was formerly our manager of the non-motorized transportation program. He is now our planning and conservation director doing an excellent job and uh, a lot going on in Sheboygan County with planning and conservation efforts. One in particular that we've been focusing on right now is the dredging and cleanup of our Sheboygan River and Harbor. So please join us next month to learn about that and our non-motorized program and other activities and planning. And until then, thanks for joining us.